Good morning, afternoon. <laughs> Not morning, afternoon. It's Brian from Kindred Acres. We had some nice rain last night. So I'm coming, taking a walk through the late winter, early spring garden. The artichokes are still looking perfect. We've got a little spot of watercress there. We've got lots of seedlings coming up. Look at that. All kinds of goodies popping up. And over here, lots of little seedlings. So we just cleaned this bed out and reseeded maybe two weeks ago, roughly. We still have some perennials popped in here. Those are perennial um, green um, garlic chives, sorry, that had cut back and uh, dried the tops for use inside. We've got some perennial herbs, um, some perennial herbs, lots of little seedlings coming up, Claytonia and lettuce. There's a pretty one coming up there. All kinds of stuff. So that's put the kale left in it. Doesn't too pretty to uh, take it out. We've got lots of lots and lots of seeds popping up over here. Oh, this is not. This is old. I don't even know why that's there. That's not what that is. We've got some peas coming up in the back. A big carrot. I think I seeded out carrots here. A lot more peas. I just put in some. It rained really heavy, and these surfaced. These were. These are sugar load dwarf pea bushes. And I guess some seeds popped up there. Um. And then over here, these were planted a little bit earlier, um, in, started in pots, and transplanted a bunch out. So we've got lots of salad greens, broccoli, cauliflower, mixed herbs, um, but sage needs to be trimmed back quite a way. Some kale, uh, a rogue um, leek that got in there. And then, uh, I planted in with the strawberries. I got some peas um, to climb up the trellis. And looks like I might have seeded out something over here also. <laughs> sometimes I forget what I throw in and sometimes I just throw stuff in. We also had some volunteers out here at one point. Just We were to just tossing seeds, but I see a lot of... A lot of little seeds germinating here that looks like either, I mean, it could be any number of things. Brassica of sorts. Look at this, we've got some strawberries starting to flower, which means we're gonna get strawberries soon. We have lots of strawberries, not just this patch here. This is the, the small patch. It doesn't even touch what we have out in the, the orchard area. We got some more leafy greens and some onions. I found Penny yesterday our red ear slider turtle she she's in permission and uh when i was cleaning out because the strawberries had kind of come into this bed further than i wanted to so i was pulling out strawberry plants and she's under there so i put that pot there to mark where she is so we don't disturb her so we've got some more baby plants here i still have to finish this section here cleaning pulling the covering off and seeding or planting that out. We have a bunch of uh, pots started inside and a couple that I've already transitioned out and are in our little mini greenhouse that will take over this space. Um, and then these are uh, Egyptian walking onions that need to be cut back completely so they can reflush. And um, I've got to pull out all this wild strawberry that got in here um, and remulch on top of this. I pruned this guy up to be more tree, tree form than bush form. So we have some more space underneath it to plant some all heel herb or whatever other herbs we want. We've got garlic over here, um, and more strawberries. All of these are strawberries. We just walk on them now at this point. The whole area out there is all strawberries. And our babies, our chickens. Blackberries are looking 
fabulous as expected. They do wonderful for us here. And the hazelnuts are budding, which is great because usually in late winter, that's when they'll bud out and send out the catkins. And that's what turns into the nuts. So they start earlier than most other shrubs and trees. It's great to see them waking up from their little slumber. The mulberry is also budding. Looks great. Oh, this is something I don't want to see. I see my peach is budding. I hope they stay closed. Slow down, my baby, slow down. <laughs> it's too soon. <laughs> Here's another hazelnut looking beautiful. This one is Theta. The other one that I just showed you is Jefferson. So they're two cultivated varieties. Um, mulberries, this is a dwarf everbearing. The one I just showed you before was the, the red one. That's a full size, it's just a baby. And this one is a dwarf, though this is the largest I've ever seen them. And if you look online, from people who sell them, they all say they cap off at about uh, six to 10 feet. And this is definitely more than that. So um, they're happy. We got strawberries as ground cover here. And uh, the kiwis are budding. They'll be okay though. They can tolerate the late frosts, so they'll do just fine. Um, plum, I mean, not plum, pear, definitely needs some pruning. I haven't gotten to that yet. And it's already budding. I've got to prune this guy. Um, that's another um, dwarf mulberry. The fig is budding. Oh gosh, this one always comes back earlier than the others, and... And we always get late frost and it tends to get bit by frost so we'll see what happens this is look at that the strawberries are already coming through here i just did this area because i had moved there's a pomegranate that i had moved from over there and uh i had just done these wood chips and the strawberries are already coming through and like you can see some mycelium in the wood chips <laughs> and then we've got um the banana trees are always happy. They're, um, of course they die back. So I will trim those back once we get past the danger of the frost because lots of little creatures hide and overwinter in these and use this for bedding and all sorts of things. Let's check on the sugar cane. This is my little sugar cane area. I don't see anything yet, which I'm surprised because it was really warm. The last few days but I'm glad I don't see anything just yet looks like the rabbits were over here too lots of rabbit poop actually that might be deer poop no I think that's rabbit poop um and let's check on the pawpaws so this area here is where we do all of our American skull cap and so far i don't see them coming back just yet which is expected it's still very early but the pawpaws are budding little beautiful velvet looking deep maroon buds those are you can tell the difference between the flower buds and the leaf buds because the flower buds are rounded so they're budding that's this is one cultivar and then we have another one over here different cultivar let's see how this one's doing the same thing budding so spring is definitely near look at all the babies that this mama tree put out so many here's another one here's another 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 so this basically this whole area this, this beautiful one this all just came up um late summer of this year and look how look how tall that is already look at how fast they grow this is all from this year and um so you can see how happy they are and they 
form this grove of trees. I might have to thin some like these, the ones that are super close to the base here. That, that's obviously not going to be good for the tree. So I'll have to trim that back. You don't want to dig them up and pot them because um, pawpaws have very deep tap roots. And if you damage the tap root, they, you'll have a tree that will be stunted. You'll waste a whole lot of time trying to grow it. It'll be stunted. It will grow very slow and it won't produce. Um, so it's just a big waste of time. It's best to start pawpaw by seed, either direct sowing or if you're going to buy pots, make sure you get them super young and uh, transplant that as soon as possible. This is an apricot and yay, it's budding. Looks good. Looks good. Looks very good. And then we've got um, over here, um, Logan berries are in this row here. Very, very um, spiky plants. And this is where all of the creeping St. John's wort and one bush St. John's wort, it looks terrible right now, but it'll come back. Um, beautiful and lush and green and um, it will be loaded with some beautiful flowers so we've got that the goji berry over here is still loaded with berries because I never got around to sorry about that x-rated scene my chickens were putting on <laughs> I never got around to uh, harvesting the berries and we took out the I had a goji here and here in these pots I took them out um, because we had more goji berries than I could even think to do with. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not so hard pressed on eating them. I know they're good for me, but I'll eat a few. I had more than I needed and they sprawl and they're thorny and just kind of annoying to have in this space. Uh, you know, on the outskirts or up against something, sure. So that's why I kept that one there and I have some up front too. And then this is a wild peach that the birds must have dropped the seed for and it showed up here and it's budding and it looks good. So we just left it. It's, uh, you know, it's fine where it is. It's happy and it's in the perfect spot, actually. <laughs> blueberries, our blueberries are budding. Again, not something we want to see just yet, but, you know, what are you going to do about it? It's nature. It happens every year and they're always fine and we still get an abundance. So this is one of our plums. It's budding. Looks good. Everything's looking good. Let's see. This is our Russian cold hardy pomegranate. Yep, it's budding. It's hard to see on camera because they're super tiny, but they're little red little tips. And we got a persimmons. This is a big old mess right here because I got to cover with wood chips but I am inoculating because I just added the this um, persimmons in that plum. So that one I already put a bunch of leaf debris under, but I'm gonna be inoculating the area 